Ida B. Wells Barnett showed the black community how to use the media to advance black causes. She showed how blacks as a group had political and economic power. It was the most heinous of acts, the lynching of black people by whites. There was no due process guaranteed by the Constitution. It was a practice that could only happen because that sense of other, that sense that blacks were inferior, were property, had not disappeared with the passage of the 13th, 14th, and 15th Amendments. If this were to change and blacks were to get the rights and justice laid out by the Constitution, they would have to make it happen themselves. After Reconstruction ended in 1876, more than 4,700 black men, women, and children were dragged from their homes, strung up, and murdered, often for no more an offense than speaking their minds or being successful. Someone needed to make these dark and hidden deeds known to the entire country. That person was Ida B. Wells Barnett. Ida B. Wells Barnett was born in Mississippi in 1862. Growing up during Reconstruction and its aftermath, she witnessed the depth of hatred against blacks and the gradual dissolving of their civil rights, particularly due process under law. Wells Barnett began her crusade against lynching in 1892 after three of her friends, Thomas Moss, Calvin McDowell, and Henry Stewart, were lynched in Memphis, Tennessee, simply because they ran a grocery store that was more successful than their white competitors. In 1893, using her small Memphis newspaper as a pulpit, Wells Barnett courageously attacked the white supremacists who incited the lynching of blacks. Ida Wells was, as her biographer refers to her, the lonely crusader. She spent a good deal of time trying to publicize lynching both to uh, whites, particularly in the North, to politicians, and to blacks throughout the country. What she wanted to do was to force the government to deal with the lynchers, to make lynching illegal, bring them to justice. And she did this in a variety of ways. She did it first as a newspaper reporter and an owner. And she was so charismatic and so vital that her first newspaper in Memphis uh, was too strong for the white population and they ran her out of town. But she then went to work for one of the best known black newspapers of the time, the New York Age, and continued to uh, publicize lynching. And as I said earlier, what she wanted was a political response, that is the politicians to control and um, punish or at least arrest people who committed the lynchings. When most Americans learned of the lynching of blacks, they were horrified. Consequently, following Wells Barnett's campaign, the number of lynchings lessened from a peak of 235 in 1892 to 107 by 1899. An anti-lynching legislation was enacted in parts of the South. <laughs> 